How are you guys doing this Valentine's? How, I, uh, nobody raised their hands. Are you guys, somebody received flowers, yes? How many did you, how many of you sent yourself flowers and you tagged somebody on Instagram or Facebook that says, oh, that one. <laughs> you can bring up the chairs on the table already. That's so awesome. Um, how many married couples do we have in here? Just, just if you're married, can you see your hands? Awesome. Tonight is not going to be much for you, but it's going to be mainly for the singles and those ready to mingle. If you're still in high school, you shouldn't be shouting. <laughs> So it's going to be a little bit different tonight. What we're going to do, we're going to have Q&A. If I can have my wife come up here. Let's put our hands together for my wife. It really, you guys scream louder for her than for Jesus. <laughs> so what are we going to do is we're going to post a number on the screen. You can text your questions to that number. And we, we won't read who it is or things like that. If you have any questions about, oh, we're going to sit down. Can I have one more mic, please? One more mic. <clears throat> What we're going to do is we're going to address some questions about, um, about dating, about uh, relationships and things like that. We're going to mainly target it to young adults and high school age. So um, that's going to be our main focus tonight, to be able to see what we can help out and assist and give guidelines when it comes to dating, when it comes to relationship. Again, we do not have all the answers. Our standard is the Word of God. Amen. So we're not going to tell you things that, you know, based on culture. We're going to go from what our pastor has been talking about. And our, like we said, our standard is from the word of God. So we'll do our best to address the questions that we have. So if you have any questions or uh, things that you want us to address or to talk about, maybe you don't understand or you need more clarity, please text. That number is 541-699-1440. And that's my handsome son this morning. He's such a... All right, so we're going to start off. Um, you want to start with the question and then um, and do uh, and go from there. Uh, we're going to, if you have any questions, if you're watching us online too, you can send your questions. And trust me, I'm not going to say, oh, Juan asked this question. I'm not going to mention names. We're just going to go general. So feel free. This is a safe environment that we can, um, we can go and address. Here's the first icebreaker. When did you first feel comfortable to fart around your spells? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are not serious. This is not going to help you to survive in life. Whenever it comes, it comes. And you go to Taco Bell, it's sooner. So uh, um, that's kind of a... First question we're going to start off is, when do you know that you're ready to date? When you're ready to date. So you want to wanna answer that one? Definitely we'll be quoting Pastor Vlad and Martin and Pablo just shared a little bit on the video. First, you have to find your master. Who is your master? You, we have to come to a strong foundation of knowing Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. It's who we're seeking after. That who we stand in God's eyes, who we are in God's eyes. As for women, it takes us a lot to understand that we are a child of God. We're a princess. We are loved. We should be, res we are respected. And how we go about with our image ourselves, the same with men. You know, once you find out um, who you are in God's eyes, that will be knowing who our master is. Second one would be our mission. Um, what is your mission? What is your goals? Do you have a dreams? What, are, what is your career? What do you have planned for your future? Your mission, serving um, in church, you know, things of that sort. So find out first who you are in Christ. Find out the things that is your mission, what you're going after. And with that, you can lastly find, you can find your mate. First knowing who you are, then you can find what you're seeking for. So. Good job. <clears throat> so master, mission, and then mate. All right. So you got to know God. You got to know what you want to do with life, your career, your pursuit and passion. Last one is your mate. Uh, somebody sent a question said, when do you know you're ready to get married? If you're both, uh, both followers of God. You know when you're ready uh, to get married, when you have those three things that we just talked about. You know God, you know your mission, and then you're looking for a helper. When God found Adam, he said that God will bring him a helper. So we don't get married just to get married, but we get married so we can accomplish our dreams and our goals that God has placed within our hearts to accomplish. Like for me and my wife, we serve both at the church. We have vision and goal to reach, to help young people to disciple them, to raise up leaders, 
to one day uh, to have orphanage, to have, you know, um, a teen center for, for the young adults. So that's our, our vision. And we wanted to do that together. So we knew this is the dreams and the goals that God had for us. And together, we know we can accomplish them. So that was, uh, that's that. Somebody asked, uh, Sylvia, what is the age that I'm able to date? Hmm. Definitely, highly encourage at least after high school. <laughs> after high school. I think, I think that's, that's appropriate age because you have to get certain things out of the way first. You know, you don't, you don't come to a 10-year-old and try to teach him or how to drive. There's a certain age for even the, in, our, in our laws and the physics, there's a certain age that they require for you to be. Same thing when it comes to dating. You know, I know a lot of our culture right now says that, you know, date, you know, try this thing as young as you can. But the moment you start doing in, in, in high school, you lose focus. You can't get good grades. You can't learn character. And that's why many adults act as kids because the time where they're supposed to concentrate on learning about themselves, who they are, developing character, they spent it on girls and guys. So then you have a bunch of 25-year-olds acting like 5-year-olds because the high school years, they spent it on, you know, their emotions, their energy, their love, their money on dating. So Especially right after high school is where you choose your career, your mission. So if you, right out of high school, it takes several, several times to make up your mind what you want to do. College student myself, it took me about two years, three years waste of, high, of college, not knowing what I wanted. So I would go from one career to another to another, which same thing goes with relationships. If you don't have that figured out yet, it will be a lot harder for you to figure out who you are, your mission, to then finally find that mate. Good question came in. I have a crush on Adrian, and I'm 13. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are not serious. Um, a question come in is, is it, is it God's will for, for people to be single? Um, you have to be the one to decide to, uh, if you, like Paul, you know, he says, you know, that's my, you know, mission and vision to accomplish certain things. You have to be the one to decide. It's not God who's going to decide saying you need to spend your life for the future alone. You're like, well, I want somebody to help me. So it's not that God decides for you that you need to be married or single. You're the one that chooses. And same thing when it comes, I'll I tackle another uh, question right away. Uh, does God chooses the person for me? No, he doesn't. God presents to you the person, but you choose. So at the end of the day, you're not going to say, God, you stuck me with this person and it's your fault. So God will present you the person, see the guy or girl, and you will make the choice. Do I want to spend my rest of my life with this person or should I go for somebody else? And it's not wrong to choose. Some people are like, oh, you know, uh, this is the only one person that God has for me. If you have the theory that it's only one person that's out there for you, if you choose the wrong one, you will mess up the whole equation for the whole world. So we're all doomed. So it's not that there's only one person. No, God will present to you people. You know, the, you know you'll be worshiping and then all of a sudden you see somebody. <laughs> then you're going to have to choose. So uh, God presents, but we choose. You want to read another one? Let's do... Uh, keys to that one. Let's do that question. Okay. What are some keys, not necessarily what we're looking for, but to fail in dating? What caused some fear? How do you fail in dating? Isolation. How, how you fail in dating and relationship is isolation. If you isolate yourself from, different, from other couples, from mentors, from pastors, you will fail. And I have repeatedly that I mentor a lot of guys when it comes to relationships and people that I see around. The moment they distance themselves from advice, that's when they fail. Because there's certain things that needs an outside look on your situation. Because you're caught up in feelings, you're caught up in emotions, and you can't see clearly. And I know many times uh, I had many guys that come up to me and said, oh, what you guys told me a couple months ago is true, and now I'm only finding out. Yeah, because... 
they were blinded by emotions and fear so it's here's here's the thing guys nobody wants you to fail in relationship no one nobody rejoices here a hungry generation family hungry generation church if you fail in marriage in dating in, in your relationship nobody wins only satan does god created healthy community healthy relationship he wants you to prosper but there are certain guidelines that you have to follow in order for that to happen so when you see somebody telling you like a mentor or a pastor hey this relationship is not good for you listen to their advice nobody's here is out to steal your girl or your man nobody's out for that they the uh, mentors not your single friends i'm not i'm talking that's a different one when your pastors and your mentors are are suggesting you something they want you to succeed that two four five seven years down the road your marriage is strong you are an example to others and you can encourage others amen so that's uh how you fail in relationship is isolation find a couple that that can challenge you find a mentor that can tell you hey you're doing wrong step up your game hey you're acting like a child put on some pants grow up so that's something that you have to do and and i'm telling you guys you know i i want to see healthy relationships i want to see couples who who stand by me 20 years down the road and say you know we did it 30 years down the road running strong having love being romantic that's what i want to see nobody wants to see breakups after breakups because nobody wins if you fail in relationships i'm gonna ask you uh, a question how do you guys keep god at the center of your relationship besides the word of god and prayer i think our biggest in our relationship is obviously serving in ministry together not just our prayer and bible time but to serve others because that's god's mission he wants us to go out and save save see lives being saved so for us what is huge is home groups meeting with others serving giving that time to see others flourish as well and for us it's what's been constant is serving i mean kids ministry anything we possibly can get our hands on and stay busy because once it keeps us busy too we're serving and at the end of the day we love we love to see god's kingdom grow so serving is one of the big yeah pieces. and it, it brings us closer it brings us closer when we serve together we go home we have things to talk about church you know things that happen funny things sad things you know things like that so it, it builds us closer so when you have you know when you both serve you know at the church you know in ministry you'll be able to see how your relationship will go stronger and stronger and somebody asked what some advice can you give to my friends that are in and out of relationship and they're trying to seek happiness relationship will never make you happy if you're not happy relationship will only reveal who you are so if you are not happy single you will be unhappy in a relationship what i cannot expect from my wife what only god can give god is love he says i am love so she also draws love from god and i also draw love from god so you can't expect this person to make you happy because they will fail because they need that love from god themselves so if somebody says i want to i want to be happy in a relationship if you're not happy single you will be not happy with a person that's just basically that um another thing that we want to address is does online dating work you know many many of us here we have social media. so this is a different culture now we're addressing different things because our parents generation is different than our generation does online dating works yes it does yes it does and and uh we have people here in our midst and actually the man is taking photos editor let's put our hands together for editor <laughs> so editor met his wife through myspace some of you guys are like what is myspace back then when we had tape players okay that's when and today their marriage is flourishing they're strong they're they're together they have wonderful kids so it's just the way you go about it you know for some people they'll meet a person in uh on in their school for others they'll meet a person online and you know they'll get to know each other so you cannot say it does not work it does work you just have to have it in godly principles 
you have to structure it around mentors you gotta you gotta always why i keep mentorship in relationship is one of the biggest things for a relationship find a strong healthy couple that you can say you know what i want you to tell me when i don't want to hear it don't go to people that will say hey well i did this wrong and they're just oh yeah you're probably overreacting no who can tell you something you are wrong and you know you need to suck it up and you need to go say sorry you need to find those kind of people that are willing to tell you that you are wrong in front of your face don't run to people who will pat you on your back i've seen marriages fail because they go to people who they know they can make an excuse and they'll be let off the hook and quote unquote i have mentorship no you don't you just have people who just have sympathy on you that's it so and, and like i said we have many wonderful healthy couples here at church that are willing more than more than you ever want for yourself for you to succeed just come up to them say hey you know what hey let's go out on date on thursday night you know give me some advice i want to learn this this and you'll see how stronger together your marriage and your relationships will be um questions coming in advice and dealing with a heartbreak <coughs> uh yeah a box of chocolates <laughs> it, it 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 all depends on on the age you're on the age you're on remember one thing that a heartbreak it could be many different things it could be unfaithfulness it could be you know you're just 14 and you got a done by your boyfriend a so heartbreak could be a blessing could be god telling you to let that go <laughs> Amen. Uh, dealing with the heartbreak uh, god you have to run to god and you have to ask god to to heal you if you're not properly healed you should not go to your next relationship because you'll use your next relationship as a rebound and nobody here wants to be rebound right so it, it is true because there's a lot of, you know, relationships don't work. Some relationships just don't work out. You need to learn how to be able to walk away and then later on look at the person, have no anger, have no unforgiveness towards them. And just when you see them, you can still shake their hand and say, hey, how are you doing? That's how you need to be able to handle heartbreak. But that only happens when you come to God and ask God to help you heal, help you recover. And, and advice and dealing practical ways on dealing with the heartbreak. If you are over with that person, delete them from your Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever that you have. Delete them. Remove every picture you have with them. Block their number. If you need to put a restraining order. This is why, guys, listen to this. Many people go back to an abusive relationship or a person who keeps using them because they haven't shut the door. If you have a picture with them on your iPhone and your on your lock screen, of course memories are gonna come back. Of course feelings are gonna come back. Of course these uh, things of oh uh, it'll never happen again are coming back. If you are over with the person, delete their number, block them, delete every trace of them as you can, so you can properly heal. If you don't properly heal, you will be going back to the same relationship and it will happen over and over. And over again and I'm telling you this happens more often and it's hard and it's hard but that's that's the steps you need to take and I many times I tell the person I'm like man block them why so you can so you can let your mind move on once your mind moves on once you get emotions out you can look at them as friends and then later on you're not you're not thinking out of your emotions but you actually can uh, reason normally No, let me go. Uh, uh, keys. Uh, I'm gonna. You wanna? I'm gonna just when you answer that one. Keys to sexual purity in dating. Keys to sexual purity in dating. Those of you who are dating right now, hopefully you're not in high school. Uh, keys to sexual purity. How do we stay pure when we are dating? Now, what is the rightly godly way to date? You wanna answer that? First, mentors. It's someone else asked, what was, how was mentors made an influence in our relationship? Actually, without mentors, I don't think we would be here today, married, um, together. 
from the beginning and at all. So number one would be mentors. Have someone to keep you accountable. It all starts, purity starts with thoughts. It starts with thoughts, wandering mind, wandering eyes, um, starting to notice things. And so when you have a mentor who can keep, keep you accountable, can be checking up on you, hey, how are you doing in your purity? You are going to challenge yourself to be strong and giving them an answer and say, I'm actually good. You're going to be, by them constantly asking you, how are you doing? How are you doing? It's almost going to force you to be like, I can't keep saying, I'm not doing good. I'm not doing good. It challenges you to do better. So mentorship to keep you accountable of things is very, very important. Another one is don't be alone. Always keep it public. The moment you're alone, you expose your... Um, you expose your temptation to go through the roof. And you say, oh, we're going to be holy. We're going to go to the prayer mount and lay hands on each other and speak in tongues. No, it won't work. You know, only Jesus, Moses, and, and I said, who else went to the mountain, came back, changed. You won't come back, changed. You will come back, destroyed. So Also with that, the freaks come out at night. Avoid being out alone, yeah. especially at night. Make, because it's yeah. true. The make, freaks come make out a rule, at night. Make a rule. Make a rule. 9 p.m. We don't, we don't do things. The, th the, the thing is this, guys. The more safeguards you s set for yourself, the better your relationship would be. You know, it's like a car. Can you drive on a sidewalk? Yes, you can. But, what you, the, you, but you will pop your tire. How far will you get? Well, how's long, how far can you get with a flat tire? So that's, that's something that you have to consider it's some people like how far is too far you shouldn't if you're asking how far is too far it's a wrong question you should ask how uh how, how holy how how much can we can we preserve you know uh how can we how godly can we be you know if would if my pastor would be here would be would we be comfortable doing this that's something you have to ask yeah it sounds kind of oh Jesus, would my pastor would be if jesus would be here would you be able to do this you want to you want to enjoy your relationship you have to understand a, a good thing in the right time is enjoyable. A good thing in the wrong time is not enjoyable. So you have to be able to set rules, set guidelines, have mentorship in your life. And when it comes to get married, dude, go all out. Do, I mean, do whatever you want once you're married. Once it comes time to dating, respect God's principle and your, and your dating life will be blessed. Somebody text that, uh, can I ask a girl through text? Uh, you haven't hit maturity yet. You're still a boy. You're still, you're still a boy. Goes back, uh, another person asked. Uh, when is it okay to kiss? Again, it's a, it's, it's a wrong question you're asking. It's a wrong question you're asking. It's, for some people could be once we stand on the altar. For others could be once he gets on his knee. Uh, besides that, I think those are going to be the two places that that should be allowed but again it, this is this is not like oh pastor said we can't do this or this like that you have to have mentors in your life and you have to go go according to you know talk to them you know and just because it's right yeah well how did pastor Vlad said uh, just just because it feels good doesn't mean it's right so that's the things you have to kind of always consider for your life and and trust me once you're married those things become a blessing to you when you do it the right way and you get married, you know, wow, you're going to enjoy it. Many times, you know, when, I'm, when we will look at each other, we're like, man, this is, this is awesome. I love this. Not that when you come to marriage, it's like, well, we just got a certificate, nothing else changed, you know. Enjoy your marriage. Save, save the things that belong to marriage for marriage. There's a good question came in. Should that person be financially stable before getting married or work together for it? parentheses mainly as a girl it helps when you have money but if you don't have a if you don't have money you still can make it it helps when you have money but if you don't have money you can still make it if you're broke together the only place is up right so should you have a job yes you need to have a job before you you get into because if you don't no money no honey that's how it is you know it, the thing is it's when you have when you have lack of money you're you're adding you're adding trouble to yourself so remember that i'm not saying it's not doable but if you don't have money you're you're causing fights to add up 
So instead of, you know, when you, you have financially stable, you have enough money, you know, it's one less things to fight about. Trust me, you'll find things to fight about. Sock is laying on the different side of the corner. You fight about that sock or like, man, really like relax. But when there's shortage of money and, and they say a lot of divorce takes place because of financial issues. So it helps, but it's, it's not required. Like when me and Sylvia, when we, when we first got married, um, I was working, I was working, I think, uh, in construction, if I believe so, if I'm correct, you know, and uh, she was also looking for a job, if I'm not mistaken. But two years down the road, two years down the road, uh, how much God has blessed us with finances, with uh, owning a car dealership, you know, with her uh, having a job now, it's, it's unbelievable. So if you would have judged me according to my financial status when I was first getting married, then you would have got me wrong. So that's, that's something though. Be the person that can see past that. It helps, but be able to see past that. If, a, if, if that guy only plays video games, then you got to run. Your character and attitude towards your finances will have a lot to play in. If I sit and say, well, I'm going to get married, my husband supports me, you might have some troubles there and you, might, you are not ready to get married. Now, if you have a different attitude towards it, saying I am going to seek a job, we need to be financially stable before we get into it, will play a big role. So your character and your attitude towards it also um, has a huge role in it. Different cultures. That's a, that's a question right now. Even in our churches, you see we have Americans, Russians, Hispanics, Chinese, black, white, every different culture. A question rises up, can I date from a different culture? Uh, in as you know, I'm you from Ukraine. She's from Mexico, even though born in America. So I don't know what makes her. <laughs> um, so, will it work? Yes, it can, and it should if you're mature enough. If you're mature enough, there are certain differences right now that culture has no say in it whatsoever. Because the way we are growing up right now, some of the people, even though you look at you and I say you're Russian, you have nothing to do with Russia. You don't even know how to spell Russia probably. So it's your maturity wise. Yes, remember this, different cultures have its different challenges. But if you're mature enough, that shouldn't play any role. What in unites you is your vision, not the language you speak. Your vision and your goals, that's what will bring you together. And your, your, mature, your maturity has to do with everything. I mean, if, if two uh, teenage, you know, kids get, get together, you know, there's even, even a round style of hair will set up, separate them, you know. Or even if you don't shower one day, you'll get, you know, you, you'll break up over that. So maturity has to do with that. But it's your vision and you go, when, me, when I met my wife and um, I knew her for a long time. And, and when I knew her vision that she wants to serve, she wants to be involved in church. I didn't care like, well, do you make tacos or do you make the Russian food? That wasn't it, you know. Uh, but when I knew that she's going to serve by me for the rest of her life because this is her vision, then I was like, man, this is, this is what it is. Let me tell you something, guys. Looks fade and go away, but hunger doesn't. Let that sink in. Find the one that can cook. <laughs> Looks fade, but hunger does. Hunger never goes away. So if you if you get hangry a lot, I better find somebody who can cook. Um, let me go. Um, how do I get out of abusive relationship? You first need to get mentors involved, because. Uh, you need to get either your parents or your mentors involved because quitting it by yourself, it will be hard. It could be threatening. So you need some uh, authority to step in to help you to pray for it, to help you recover. And we also have counseling ministry here at church who can help you to recover from it. And Maria, I don't know if she's, if she's here tonight, but um, one of the ladies here at church, Maria, her name is, uh, if you want to ask more about it, she can, she's right now helping many many people who came out of abusive relationship to help them to recover it's not easy but it's doable it's doable and and like i said uh you if you cannot heal if you don't properly heal your next relationship 
will just be a rebound and and the per i just feel sorry for the next person so yes it's possible first find mentors explain them what's happening let them step in let them help in, out in prayer and things like that uh about christian and non-christian i want to touch the subject uh, i like a boy but or i like a guy i like a guy but he doesn't come to church and he's not christian can i still date him um the thing is it's you won't enjoy it you won't enjoy a relationship where the person's christian the person's christian or you're not christian or other way around because your visions and your goals and the things you do in life differ it's like one person is going to be pulling one way the other person is going to be pulling the other way and the fights will start fights will, in the beginning you're like oh he's so cute you know he listens to gangsta music and you know but later on it's going to irritate you so much that it, it can turn south another question people say i've been dating this person already for some time and i just recently gave my life to jesus do i dump my boyfriend who's not christian that's a question that i cannot say yes or no to because we have many couples here in our church who first the girl got saved like for example um mike dorashuk is he here tonight he's the one that ran, runs coffee shop his what his his girlfriend at the time first got saved and he wasn't saved and she came to us she's like do i dump him we're like no pray for him she started praying for him he comes later on that service during that month gives his life to jesus also and a few weeks later a month later they get married and tonight and, and today they're one of the power couples at our church so i cannot tell you yes or no because this every situation will differ find mentors that can help you go about it who can support you and can uh closer answer your, your your question because it's not a yes or no but we've seen many 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 times maybe the husband first gets saved and then uh he lives with his wife who does not believe in god he keeps praying for her and then later on she gives her life to jesus so it's not a a, a um a yes or no question so that's kind of a you want to ask good what are some topics Christians should talk about before getting married? I would encourage every single person to listen now about uh, Marriage Today podcast. Anybody know Marriage Today podcast? Marriage Today is by Jimmy and Karen Evans. Before we got married, I listened to some of the episodes like six times. Marriage Today, you don't need to be married to listen to that, but it prepares you for marriage the things that you'll encounter, the questions you need to ask and things like that. So those are the topics that you should be, they'll give you enough topics. There's so much material out there for, to prepare you for marriage. It's insane. Question came in is, uh, what should we do on our first date? Simple. No, what should you do? Not eat. First thing is this, ask questions. What is your name? Susan is that your real name is this how you look when you wake up or did you put on a pound of makeup do you always shower in the mornings or you smell like this all the time do you brush your teeth what's your credit score do you owe any debts you have to ask questions because you need to know the person my my biggest and the biggest advice when before you even ask them out is get to know them as a friend don't ever tell a guy or girl you like her or or before you get to know them as a friend because the moment you tell them you like them oh man they put on a facade they put on this face that i'm perfect for guys they're like i always shower shower i always do my hair and i always put on deodorant no you don't because only she said that she likes it. now you start doing it you stink all the time so it's, it's like one of those things so if you like a guy or girl never tell her get to know them as a friend once you see the real them they just propose get married that's it exactly but you know what that's exactly how me and my wife did it i knew my wife for about five years before and then the, when the time came and it was right for us we talked to our pastors we talked to our mentors to get married we didn't date we actually just proposed to her three months later we were married so so that's 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 the thing you guys have to understand 
in f how many of you guys have friends and you know like oh he's real you know he's real you know I'm saying he's real all the time <laughs> that's how you have to know them you have to joke around with them laugh with them that you know they always come late they you know they don't put on makeup and you see them you're like wow you know you look good without makeup you don't have to do this that you know the real them so that when time comes and you tell them that you like them that that you know they're attracted that you know I want to give this thing a shot that you're not surprised by the that they have going on inside of them so so because that's what happens sometimes they fall in love with the beauty but next morning they wake up with the beast hashtag they fall in love with the beauty but next morning they wake up with the beast and like how did this happen well you didn't know them as a friend you fell in love with just the 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 beauty side of it but you forgot that there's there's a and everybody has a beast inside of them Everybody has hangry. that hangry, hangry mm -hmm. person that sometimes they don't serve those eggs right and you just flip out. I said over easy, wow. you know. Getting to know from a distance is huge. Um, you get to see the way they communicate with others, their siblings. If you're around them and their siblings, the way they treat their siblings, yet the way they treat their mom is going to be huge. So, yeah. so getting to know them from a distance is huge because... The way they treat their mom, don't expect them to treat you any better. So if you see them yelling at mom, sure enough, he will be yelling at you once you're married. So watching from a distance is huge. And uh, they said, how do you get out of a toxic, uh, uh, somebody sent a message, said that after hearing this message that about relationship, I want to I wanna distance myself from my boyfriend or call it off. What is the best way to go about it and how do I present it? So if you find yourself in a relationship right now and you're like, man, after hearing this message, it's the wrong time for me to date. How do I call it quits and, and still, you know, be able to pursue and, and not have enemies? You, if you call it quits, they'll still be mad. You have to understand. There's no way, there's no such thing as not offending them. You will offend them. You have to explain to them, look, I value my future and your future so much that I'm willing to do the right thing in the beginning. You can't drive an empty, far, an empty car far enough. You can't, uh, like, if you don't do the right thing in the beginning, you can't go far in life. So that's what we have to understand. If you're in a, in a relationship right now, you're like, man, I'm only 14 and I'm dating right now. What the heck am I doing with my life? Simply bring it up. Look, I want to know my dreams and my passion. And right now, I only got you and you only got Xbox. So we got nothing, you know. So you, you have to, you have to, you have to lay it down. So look, I don't even know myself. I need to concentrate on building my character. I need to get a job first. Hey, I need to learn how to clean up my own room before I even tell you that I love you or I like you or whatever it is. Just simply lay, tell them the truth. Don't sugarcoat it. I have some guys come up and say, oh, I, she's not the right one. She's doing this. She parties. She does this, this, like that. How do I, how do I leave her? But you know, I don't want her to go home and cry. Uh, too bad she will nothing you will do that will stop making her cry you simply have to say look i i treasure our relationship so much that i'm willing to do the right thing i know you might not like it now but you'll appreciate it appreciate it later simple as that so uh that's who should say i love you first whoever gets on their knee first <laughs> whoever gets that ring and, and gets on their knee uh this is a good one. How much of age difference is acceptable? I think, I, I don't think you should look at age because you have to understand one part. There's some people who are 25 act like they're 15 and some 15 year olds act like they're 21. Age does play a role, but don't let that be your deciding factor. Don't let that be deciding factor. We have couples that are, you know, my dad and my mom, they're, t I think, 10 years apart. You know, but that's the, that's, the, that's the culture they grew up in. Now it's like you're one year older and everybody causes like, uh, you know, the end of the world came. No, it's your maturity. It, it's your maturity. There's some people who are 30 years old and they're, they're young and they, they look active and they're fun and they're laughing all the time and you think they're 21. So that shouldn't be like, oh, he's 31. I need to stay away from that guy or, you know, so it just... Talk to your talk to your mentors; they will guide you to it. But age shouldn't be your deciding fact. Yeah, if it's like twenty years apart, then I don't know, man. 
Uh, we'll pray for you right after service. <laughs> Does she read it? Should I marry her even if she makes more money than me? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, our timing coming to an end. I know you guys are enjoying it, but it's 9.03 already. Everybody, time is flying, huh? So that's basically uh, all the questions that we have. And uh, if we have the, can we have the worship team come up front right now?